You know, man, this episode right here is gonna be special. We're in a place with a lot of spiritual vibrations, a lot of eclectic taste in terms of what the musical scene has provided. And we're gonna visit them all from the indigenous pieces to the culture, all the way down to the to the newfound love for, for reggae. You know what I mean? So we're gonna cross the gamut. But more importantly, we're just gonna show you all this beautiful this vibe that this city has to offer, man. It's a beautiful thing. Me in Hawaii, welcome. Girl, let's go to Hawaii and daydream. While we making love, yeah, enjoy. Yes, y'all. This is Music City, Hawaii. And of course, when we're going to enter the scene, we got to come to the first nice, iconic structure. Looks like we do in some of the other episodes. But there is an iconic theater here. It's called the Hawaii Theater. Very important to the music scene and to the cultural scene in general to, to, to Honolulu. So, Consolidated Amusement Company started the uh, Hawaii Theater in 1921, the building. And they actually opened up the doors in 1922. And when it opened up in 1922, and as you can see, some of the buildings around here comprehensively are from the 20s. I think this area was really being built up in the 20s. Um, we have the Hawaii building opening up right adjacent to it in 1924. But in the 20s, one of the featured things that comes out of the Hawaii Theater, of course, is vaudeville. You know, like in New York, in the Apollo, um, when it first opened, they catered to the burlesque crowd, more or less. But over here, the Hawaii Theater opens up, and you have vaudeville going on, but you also have the silent movie scene, really prominent. So this theater was the pride of the Pacific. It was the state of the art at that time for showing the silent movie genre. You know, the Groucho Marx crew in the whole nine yards. Um, and it stayed that way, doubling up with the vaudeville piece as well as the silent movie piece, all the way up into mm, the late 1950s, early 1960s, when the actual talkies started proliferating the scene in terms of the movie, movie industry. So you start getting motion pictures. And so this theater kind of like transitioned into a motion picture establishment where people go see movies. Uh, and it stayed that way for a while. But um, around, uh, mm, it closed down around 1984. You know, the business slowly started to decline. And around 1984, they had to close the doors. Um, but the Concerned Citizens Union um, created a nonprofit, the Howard Theater Center. And through that nonprofit, they were able to kind of like open the doors back again for this illustrious establishment in 1996. And from that point forward, even to now, this building, in terms of the music scene in Hawaii and Honolulu, has played host to all kind of just musical genres. Because this island is very eclectic in terms of the musical taste. So all the different tastes, you know, from reggae all the way to the traditional Hawaiian type of music to jazz has come through this theater. 
And so these are the venues that keep the, the blood force alive on the creative cultural scene. And it sits on the edge of Chinatown. Very interesting cultural dynamic uh, because that music that comes here, Chinatown gets a taste of. In Chinatown, this gets very big on the reggae. So it's a lot of good blends. Um, we're going to explore some more of those in Music City. But yo, Music City, the story of any city is never complete, remember, without the story of this music. What's up fam? And once again, I want to welcome you to Music City, Hawaii. And I'm in Honolulu down here with the Hawaii Theater. And it just got me thinking in this spot, in the park adjacent to it. And as I look around, I see so many buildings in, in the 1920s erected. And I just started thinking about what life and times were when these establishments were going up. So I'm gonna focus on the Hawaii Theater in 1922 um, and contextualize. It was the Cohen bought this building. Let me just give you some events of 1922. They'll further contextualize what was going on in the world as I love to do. Um, so one of the, the, the events of 1922 was actually the formation of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The USSR was created in 1922. In the United Kingdom, the UK, you got Center Court of Wimbledon being built. Also in the United Kingdom, you have British Broadcasting Company being formed, BBC, one of the found, foundational, fundamental you know, communications mechanisms in the world. Um, in India, we have Mahatma Gandhi in prison. Um, up in Canada, you have the first successful insulin treatment. In the United States, coming back home, the Lincoln Memorial gets dedicated by William Howard Taft in that year. Also, if you go to Egypt, that was the year that King Tut's tomb was um, open. You also had the first public radio broadcast in France, um, as well as in Britain. And prohibition in the United States of America was happening, so the home brewing of alcohol is, is illegal. It's become illegal in the United States. So you had the speakeasies and the proliferation of those types of events opening up soon. And also, if you go, if you live in Los Angeles, that was a year that the Hollywood Bowl opened. So all of those musical acts and genres that come through the Hollywood Bowl, I've even played there before, um, had to start in 1922. And last but not least, if you're a Yankee, if you're up north in New York, which is one of the home birthplaces of music and all kind of trends across the nation, um, the construction of your Yankee Stadium began in that year. Alright, so just know that. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that was on the reality, the landscape of reality around the world that um, was on people's minds. You can kind of figure what kind of things were, you know, were going on. So you're in the midst of that, had Howard Theater, I mean the Hawaii Theater, uh, doing the talk, the non-talking, the silent movies. And Vaudeville was the escape for people here. So think about that. Go look up some Vaudeville and see what that entails. Pretty interesting art form. Ah, Music City Hawaii, y'all. Know your history. <laughs> Yes, yes, y'all. This is your boy Garfield Bright. 
And you know I'm in Honolulu. And I'm in front of none other than Blue Note Hawaii, which is dope. See, the way they do it, the Blue Note Entertainment Group. There's a brother named Danny Ben Susan. And um, we started the entertainment group in 1981. Those investors have since partnered up with Al Rigger Waikiki and um, placed the Blue Note inside. This is their latest iteration of Blue Note inside of the Waikiki Hotel here, 2015 in Oakland. But they represent a conglomerate that produces these Blue Note um, clubs worldwide, international. It's the same guy who owns the Howard Theater. Um, if you know about B.B. King's, he owns that. So they're pretty, pretty astute in terms of developing jazz um, clubs and making the jazz scene pop in certain cities. And what a better place, what better place could it be than here in Waikiki with this Blue Note? And what it really is cool about it for me and the reason I'm covering it is because not only is it the home where you can see people like Diane Reeves um, alongside with a reggae artist like Capleton in the same night because they do two nights here. Um, but you, you get the actual respect of the local community. They actually showcase, it's like in their mission statement where they want to like create a confluence of international big name artists with the local community so they can ingratiate themselves with the local community in terms of developing that music. So you'll see a lot of the locals here. I'm gonna run through some and I'm gonna let you know by name some of the dope locals that are dope on the reggae scene. I mean, they have a really burgeoning reggae scene here that a lot of people don't realize Hawaii is known for. So they have artists like The Green. Please forgive me Hawaiians if I mispronounce names, but Anu here, the beautiful um, woman um, um, reggae artist. Jay Boog, you got the likes of Kimmy, you got the likes of Hot Rain, you have Iration, Pepper, um, Natural Vibrations, the list goes on and on. You have Mike Love, Fiji, Butter Walter. I mean, it's a, it's a host of local talent that gets their start and gets to perform and see the venue of quality alongside with the greats. And you have that in the Blue No Hawaii. Let that jazz life live on, man. I love jazz. I, I have a strong feeling that the Bop era, all those Bop era musicians, Charlie Parker and the likes, if they were born now, they would have been hip hop artists. So jazz plays a very important role in the imagination development of any given city. Understand that, it's more than just music. And that melting pot exists. It's only 12 notes in existence, y'all. Music City. When I come down the street, I enjoy performing. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the people yeah. passing by. I could see that some of them, they like me. Yeah. I could see that some people, they enjoy music. They come around and say, can you sing this? Can you sing that? I enjoy it when they ask me, can you sing Tiny Bubble? Because it's the legends, Dan Ho's song. Dan Ho's song there? Tiny Bubble. Yeah. Hey Tracy, you got a good man, Leo's a good man. He stopped me on the street and said, hey, you that brother from Shy, right? I was like, yep. He said, look, you gotta sing to my lady. So I will. This is directly from your man Leo to, to your ears, Tracy. And if I ever fall 
in love again I will be sure that the lady's a friend <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a photo too, bro Who? Yo, 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 what's up fam? It's your boy Garfield, Music City, Hawaii And I always like to, you know, just interact and interface with the people who live here to see what the post is and I got my man Lee on the scene. So, and you know, I just want to, you know, holler at him and ask you, look, man, you know, Hawaii seems to be a real eclectic blend of musical taste. Can you just name some of the musical things that, that are represented here in Hawaii? I know reggae is one, but can you just give me a couple of from yeah. the indigenous all the way to the You know, you got Brother Is, who's one of the, the one of the main guys who's done the music here. You know, he was very well known. Brother Is. Brother Is. He passed away back in uh, about, about 15, 20 years ago. Uh, from a heart attack, but uh, his music's very inspirational, you know. What kind of genre was it? Uh, Hawaiian. Hawaiian, Hawaiian music. music. Oh. He started off with a group called the Makaha Sons, oh. out of Waianae, so it's oh. really good, man. It, the Hawaiian culture is real different uh, as far as like the, the, the agriculture, the food, everything's yeah, nice, man. Yeah. I saw the soil, is so red, bro, like there's no way it can't be anything but though with the what comes up out of it man so it, it's from the volcano yeah and actually uh, uh it's the soil is what actually makes our pineapples taste more taste sweeter. good huh that's yeah. why i thought something like that man see that's good stuff that you're hearing from this brother right here you get the real feel and the smell and the taste of the city what's the like so in terms of music what's the most popular genre here is it, is it still the cultural hawaiian music or has anything else kind of like or is it you know? yeah hawaiian music has evolved into more of a it's more of a popular huh. style of music. Huh. It's not like back in the 80s and 90s when it was sounding of, right. you know, 50s like this. Right. It's more poppy and more reggae sounding. Huh. You know, it's upbeat. Dope. But it's good. Everybody, yeah. everybody listens to it, you know. We don't, don't think we show ourselves. We listen to everything. Now, we love hip-hop. We, we, got, we got you guys. No doubt. No doubt. You know, we love R&B. I know this, so, man. That's why we love coming here, man. Yeah. But, Leo, thank you for all that. Man, you, that's valuable to me, bro. All right, and mahalo and aloha, brother. Mahalo and aloha. All right. <laughs> Dopeness, yo. Music City, Hawaii. Music City, Hawaii. Peace. They want us to open the show. We're going to open the show. Yeah. Music City, Hawaii. I'm here at the Aloha Tower. We about to get busy. Part of the music landscape tonight. I'm gonna holler at y'all when I get on stage. <laughs> the songs could comfort you and give you some direction. The lyrics were vivid, but simple. Back to a time where so Hawaii. I bring to you shy.
Um, but this is your boy Garfield signing out. You can see the Hawaii. It's good to be me sometimes, you know what I mean? <laughs>